started. So salutations, y'all, and welcome. This is episode 20 of Design Therapy. We welcome you into this space to connect and to converse and to exchange ideas from wherever you are in the world. Bienvenidos, ni hao, bonjour, hawani, welcome in. Just glad to have you with us. Today's episode, as always, is brought to you by CORE, Brand Discovery Foundations. We are your facilitators. You have myself, Keone Chong. You have powerful Jose Caballero, and we have the lovely Mary Gribbon. So as a reminder, you guys, our mission is to act to activate, educate, and support a decentralized global creative community in finding their purpose, in growing their careers, and in leading the future of creativity. This is co-creation. And we are the system. So if you guys are interested in learning a little bit more on how to build brands for the 21st century, what that looks like, how to get the Brand Discovery Foundations so you can really innovate at those levels, you can check it out at coreismagic.com. So as always, we always invite you to like and subscribe and comment. And let's dive into today's agenda. So we're going to do drop in for about 15 minutes and we're going to talk about our download. It's uh, sort of like the theme for the week and moving forward. Uh, Then we're going to dive into our topic for today, which is going to be money. So we're going to spend a few minutes around money and then we're going to dive into a retrospective. Um, The retrospective is important because, uh, you know, we want to continue to be able to meet you guys at your needs and to figure out the best way for us to be able to support you. After that, we'll dive into the upload, which was, you know, like, what is the takeaway from today's get together from today's chat? And then we'll talk a little bit about the accelerator program that we have going on. And then we'll finalize with music and no cookies. So here's the drop-in and the drop-in question. The drop-in always starts with your name, location, and what you do. And then what has been your favorite part of the summit? So uh, Jose, would you like to model that for us? Sure. I'm Jose Caballer. I am in Los Angeles. I am a designer, a facilitator, a community activator um the favorite part of my summer it's been a real like woo summer so there's been a lot i think my favorite part of the summer or i feel that my favorite part of the summer has been relationship like just working on dealing with challenges and um building new ones and just kind of like almost like a, it's been a it's been a very uh, relationship a relationship themed summer um that's been kind of like the favorite seeing the ins and outs of all of that um so that's my drop in i'm jose and i'm complete Thank you for that drop in, Jose. Would anyone else in the audience like to drop in? I would love to drop in. Um, I mean, my name is Pape. I'm based in Panama City. I'm an artist. Uh, I do illustration and and brand strategy as well. I can now say it proudly. I feel that the project that I'm working right now is my core graduation. I'm super proud and happy with the project I'm working with. And I think that that's actually one of the highlights of of this summer is the confidence. And I feel that I'm closing a learning cycle that I started last year. Uh, And I'm grateful for that because it's been an amazing growth. Actually, last year, one year ago was when I started coming to uh, the webinar. And I can honestly say that I've grown I, if I had to put a percentage, it would be like a 400 percentage 
for 100% growth, personally, professionally, like uh, so many things have changed and I'm just present in that and happy to start a new cycle again. So thank you. Thank you for that, Pape. Floor is open, y'all. Would anybody else like to drop in? I would like to drop in. Shaquille here. So I'm Shaquille from the Seattle area. I'm a designer and brand strategist. Um, my favorite part of the summer has been overcoming the most intense burnout of my life, as well as um, like redefining the term hustle and our CNJ knows what I'm talking about. Uh, so I'm going to be writing a blog post about that. So I'll share that in the community when it's out and I'm done speaking. Thank you for that Shaquille. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Hustle, hustle, hustle culture is definitely a thing that needs to be addressed. Uh, would anybody else like to drop in? I can go. Yeah, I think as a as a child of August and as a Leo, I think I my previous changes were always initiated in January. <laughs> and I feel like they always were never completed. But this time I feel like the, the change was initiated by <laughs> not by accident, by but not yeah, it was initiated at the right time. And I feel like this summer is like bringing me through through the whole cycle. And I also feel like as a Leo and like as this season is my season, it means season where I feel full in order to overcome challenges. I feel like my favorite part of summer is like, is always like bringing me that opportunity to, to, to to be reborn and i think like this summer was like was that was i i for, for the first time i used summer as 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 i should i was not aware of the full power of the summer till now so yeah that's that's my favorite part of the summer i'm arsene and i'm complete thank you ars that was awesome brother definitely felt that uh, Mila, what's going on? Hey, everybody. It's good to be back. I've been um, similar to someone else I've ever said. But yeah, I think I joined like a year ago. Um, so um, I feel like I've come full circle just with this whole COVID thing. Um, and the best part of my summer so far is that I got a ticket for Lollapalooza for $250 for all four days. <laughs> like I had only planned to go one day. But then like that like came about and I was just like, yay. And so also my, my favorite part of summer is just seeing people out in the city. I'm from Chicago. I live in Chicago. I work in Chicago. And just seeing them out eating, being together, just it's not a ghost town anymore. And it was for a long, 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 long time. It seemed like just a year, but the year felt like maybe three years because it was so desolate around here. And so I'm really glad just to see vibrancy and energy back in the city. Yeah, I bet the loop is really active this time of year. Awesome. We can have time for a couple more shares. Would anybody else like to share? I can share. Hi, guys. I miss you. <laughs> so I'm Catarina. I'm from Brazil. I live in the capital, Brasilia. Um, it made me sad to see your comment, Mila, because here in Brazil, things are still like so fucked up. And I miss being out there. It's not totally a ghost city, but yeah, things are kind of hard, but I really have like a good hope that things can be better. Um, so currently I'm studying advertising and marketing, but as I always say, I am an enthusiast of design, of photography, of cooking, gardening, and whatever it comes, like, here I am. And my favorite part of summer was um, going to my grandfather's house. 
Um, it's been like years since I lost, last saw him. And I went to the airport and I was scared as fuck, <laughs> but it was amazing. It was totally worth it. I took all of the like care and everything else. And yeah, that's it. Thank you guys. Thank you for that lovely share. That's awesome. I totally felt that. Yeah, I miss family. I can't wait to go back to Jamaica and check in on the fam myself soon, hopefully. One more check in, y'all. Anybody else want to just drop in? Uh, my name is Jim. I'm in Chicago. Uh, I'm a maker and I'm trying to do a brand strategist. My favorite part of my summer this year was I found a source for some raw materials furniture company that's selling off PNC plywood cutouts. I got a pile. <laughs> I cut off all their waste. I get this really good cabinet grade plywood. That's 13, 13 plies. This is the good stuff for rapid prototyping and making shop fixtures and jigs and stuff. So I got piles of I like it when I get the bargain material stuff. It makes sense. I'm gonna to go tomorrow and pick up some more. Get all kinds of funny shapes too, so that my mind going. <laughs> awesome, Jim. Thank you so much for that drop in. Uh, you know, as a fellow maker, you know, I love getting my hands on raw materials. Oh, I miss having a garage for sure. Thank you, y'all. Um, this is how we always open up, you know, our conversations, and it's important for us to connect. And this is a drop-in exercise that I hope you guys, you know, practice in your own circles. Uh, but let's move on, and let's move on to the download. So, this uh, this week's download it related to money. And uh, I was looking for a quote that could um, help us kind of look at money in a different way than we've been conditioned to. And I came across this quote, you know, and dropped it in, and this is how it goes. When we focus on money in and of itself as being evil, we're actually scapegoating. Money is a tool, nothing more and nothing less. It is a tool for getting what we need and want. So um, when I first came across this quote, I personally uh, aligned with it because so often, particularly as creatives and artists, uh, we have like almost like an emotional reaction when we think about money and when we think about finance. And a lot of it tends to be negative, right? Like, oh, money, like, oh no, money is a reason for this or that, and, you know? Um, I think feel that you know we have to actually take a more stoic approach with with money and understand that um, currently it's a necessity for the way that we operate and it's a necessity for huge societies and it is not you know the source of evil it's just a tool you know just like a gun or a paintbrush and it can be used for positivity and it can be used for negativity um, but that was, you know, the download that I wanted to have us kind of keep in mind um, as we talk about money moving forward. Um, and especially as we dive into um, this foray in uh, the decentralized world of DeFi and blockchain, um, a lot of the principles behind those technologies are going to challenge a lot of the typical conventions that we have around um, around finance, around money, around agreements, around, you know, governance. And uh, yeah, those are my thoughts. Jose? Yeah, we should have a conversation. Um, welcome anybody to jump in. Um, I think the next the, the next slide is, is uh, the next slide is uh, the yeah, the conversation about money. 
on the quote and <clears throat> Jersey said <clears throat> Barry kept on saying many stupid I mean what's interesting about my relationship with Barrett and the work that we did together or that we do together um, when you start looking at it objectively kind of um, based on um, uh, without the emotional aspects of it right like the the best example from the clubhouse this monday was you know us pitching and uh having um barrett kind of not be attached to uh the limitations or to the ideas that uh, i might have had applied as a designer i i would be like oh my god that's a lot of money uh for a proposal and barrett was like no how much how much is it that the client is getting out of this or, you know, the value that that is being generated because of the problem that's being solved. And he was able to kind of just continuously push us to go beyond um, beyond the, the comfort level and also beyond um, being attached to it and, and using it really as a tool. The minute that you put it into like spreadsheets and like financial controls and planning and targets, you get comfortable uh, managing it as a tool versus as a like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, this is a, this is a lot of money. Um, and, it, and it becomes easier to build like momentum around what you're building. And I think if we go to the next slide, Keone, the, the, the introduction I think for us as a community to this conversation about decentralization and what a DAO is, you know, Pape brought this up yesterday on a call that we had, uh, which is really powerful. Um, we've been having, I've been having this conversation about what to do, like the vision of the system long term, and we kind of began including decentralization into it. And the, the, the time and the journey that I spent in the, in the blockchain space, Mary has spent, we're kind of going back in it a bit in some of the work that we're doing right now. The advice came through from, um, from an advisor that you know the system uh should be a a dao basically a decentralized autonomous organization uh a system token being part of it as part of the vision uh getting on discord which we're going to encourage people to do i think there's a link and uh, mauricio if you can drop the link for having everyone uh be on discord but for the fall once we come back in september um, we're going to be focusing a lot on talking about this conversation about decentralization and about the blockchain and creating a DAO with this community as a seed, uh, but then also expanding it and kind of growing and inviting different people uh, around the world in this community to join us. Um, so, yeah, starting to get familiar. Uh, we have our NFT episode. It's going to come out soon. Uh, we've been working on this week and uh, it's a conversation uh, that the conclusion at the end is helping encourage everybody to set up a wallet, even if they're not using it um, and start getting familiar with with what it feels like to be inside the, the space uh, of blockchain and of DeFi and of decentralization. I, I hate the word crypto, but let's use it crypto. Um, that's it. <clears throat> I think it's shifting our perception towards this idea of inevitable abundance, um, building community at the end of the day. If you think of money as a community exercise, if you think of growing your community, growing your customers, growing uh, your opportunities, it's always going to be about people. Um, it's always going to be about connection. And, you know, the mechanics are important and they need to be done but doing them together and working together is ultimately something that uh, for me personally as, a, as an extrovert and as a person who enjoys working with other people, it's all about community and, and how we do this together. How do we support each other? How do we help each other grow? How do we help our businesses grow? How do we collaborate? And it's a good conversation to have. So I'm going to open the floor, let people talk about how community and has impacted their well-being, financially or otherwise. You know, mental health is worth a lot too. Um, <clears throat> is it true that crypto is not beneficial to the environment? 
um, it's relative. It does take up a lot of energy, but many things take up a lot of energy. And that's something that people are very actively solving, working to solve, meaning with the power consumption issue is um, running computers that run uh, the blockchain space and the Ethereum space or any any blockchain. So that, Ger Geraldine, that, that's something that's being addressed. And it can be addressed with solar power. It can be addressed with how we move away from current, you know, fossil fuel based power generation. So hello, Rafael. So I'm complete. Um, anybody else wants to talk about money or their benefits of community or crypto, whatever, you know, let's just keep it open. Yeah, um, I just want to add real quick to that point that Geraldine brought up um, about the concern about the environment. <laughs> yeah, that's a concern and that's going to be a concern for really for all utilities. Um, what is interesting about crypto is for the first time, we can actually track and measure it. So what we're seeing is, you know, the first time a utility being able to track what its potential carbon uh, offset is to the environment. Um, there are other utilities as well. We just can't track them. And so they've kind of slipped out of the conversation. So, yes, it is something to be of note, um, but it's also important to understand the context behind why that is being uh, brought up in the conversation. So does anybody else have any thoughts, you know, around uh, sort of the focus and the emphasis that we're going to have moving forward around crypto and blockchain, uh, decentralized finance, uh, NFTs is going to be a big push as well. Um, all of these building blocks that the way that we see it are going to be necessary for the future of the digital experience. So for ourselves as creatives, um, as we're building our personal and professional careers, uh, these are all elements of technology that we're going to have to embrace at some point in the future. And we're kind of like, okay, so let's set that baseline now around the uh, familiarity and the understanding of how these tools will benefit ourselves, uh, benefit our clients, and ideally benefit society at large. Mm. Mila, what's up? Um, so I'm excited about this, um, what you guys don't want to call it crypto, but you know, this new kind of money, I see it as like, um, but the stock, the stock market. So you basically say, I want to pick this one and I want to invest in this one and then see what happens. And, um, I'm in a position now to do that. So I'm excited in that sense to see what, what happens with my investments and um, watch them grow. Because when I was 18, I purchased my first stock. And it was for Walgreens. And I was like, well, I like Walgreens. They have everything. They seem like, you know, good enough. And, and that stock did really well. I mean, I wish I had invested more at the time, but it taught me how, how that money did grow over time. And I still have the Walgreens stock. So to see that, had I initially invested more, I would have had a lot more money. But just to see the changes in it and like watching the stock market and seeing that gets me excited about this new form of currency. So, um, yeah, I'm, I love, I love money. Money loves me. Money flows through me and I'm complete. Thank you for that, Mila. I love that. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it is potentially the, the, the de facto form of currency for our children. So, you know, for ourselves to get involved in it at this age, you know, and I think there's something also to keep in mind. You know, generationally, we have opportunities to invest into, you know, resources that have the potential for a lot of generational wealth. Um, but typically, generational opportunities, financial opportunities come with a lot of caveats in, you know, typical capitalist structure. Um, but in this space, the opportunities are vast. And, you know, it, blockchain is a baby. You know, the Internet is still... The internet is what, you know, we've seen the internet since like really impact our lives, probably since the late nineties. And you know, the internet is still like a middle-aged adult, like, come on now, he hasn't figured out what it is or she hasn't figured out what it is or what it's going to be. There's so much room for growth and evolution, but yeah, Arsene what's up girl? Yeah. I wanted to share first about the book that some of you heard. So sorry for that but, i mean this is the month and this is the team and i need to share it again 
And yeah, I think I want to first share like book from Char Charlie, Charlie Einstein, which is sacred economy regarding the money and everything that we are talking here, because I think it is really good way. It's, it's really good introduction in like why blockchain space is opening up possibilities and also like what is the problematic with current with current system and just reading that book and reading about money and in connection to quote about DAO, I think the one of the biggest takeaway from the book regarding that is that money in, in its current form and it, in its future form is just one story. And we are currently living that story and we are, we are currently living like mono story. We are, we, we are not aligned with our current story, which is like, in a book, Charlie is talking about like story of separation. And I think like crypto space, blockchain and DAOs are like opening containers for a million different stories and like million different economies. Some of them can function on like real money, but it's it's about like creating alignment and like what's what's the story of that community and what's what they are going to live and what they are going to value and like in a sense it's just like tool for like aligning energy and like channeling where do you want the energy to go so i feel like dao and like everything that is happening in blockchain is opening that and <laughs> i will use this opportunity to like ask or like yeah, ask everybody because I am in the phase of like really as I'm moving slowly from from or like not moving but expanding from development into other spheres. I'm now really into phase of like creating some kind of workshops around that because I feel like it is it is my duty and I always felt it is my duty as developer to to like manage to create bridges which which at the end is my is my impact statement but creating bridges and like helping creative world be onboarded with technology and part of this community enable me that enable me to like try prototype first first like first presentation and after that presentation i was i was really inspired and yeah, I'm now in like, it was, it started with like small five minutes presentation, but now I'm like slowly prototyping into, into, into workshop that is currently called like human chain. And the goal is not to use any technology or any technical term and to try to explain blockchain. So yeah, if anybody is interesting to be part of, of, of experiment, let me know. I'm asking, <laughs> I'm complete. Yeah, powerful share, brother. Um, totally digging that. And congrats and excited for this journey that you're embarking on. Uh, human chain. You're going to have to share that with us as things get more developed, for sure. Uh, would anybody else like to share, you know, dive into the conversation? Thoughts, comments, questions? Uh, I, I would like to, to share something and connect it with what all of you have said, because when I see the growth that I've experienced by finding a community, which is something completely new for me and and like being disengaged in a community and how we all have like a language and a culture that is being built by everyone. And even the frameworks like, you know, core is just a framework and how we use it. But it, when we come to work together and we understand our process and it's the same process, it, it I, I can see it so easy to work together and not get lost in the ego if I'm right or wrong or, you know, because there's no ownership of the ideas. And I, I, I feel that uh, it, it's been a, a complete journey. And I remember the first circle when when I forgot his name, he was leading and he was like the captain of the group. And it was so, so difficult to just detach from the ownership of what we were creating together. But that point was like a shifting point in my career when I really, really detached myself from my work and, and it, it completed with the book that Jose recommended, A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. And when he started talking about ownership and ego and all that. So that community connected with crypto and smart contracts, like and I can see how powerful we become when we 
create our own culture, when we create our own values, and when we gather together to solve problems for other people with all of our power, together with with a, a unified currency or, or token we have, that we can define the contract, like if someone's doing more or less, I, I don't know, we can divide it and we can work together with frameworks and currency. And I think that's, that's like, uh, it's exciting. It's exciting to dream about it. And it's exciting to know that like we all have the power to create and the frameworks just bring us together. And, and we're learning to, as, as Jeff Silva said once in a clubhouse that just to become a better designer, you just have to become a better human being. And I feel that that's the ultimate goal of, of the system is just learning from each other, listening to each other and become like better humans and Maybe if we can change the world for, for better, you know? I'm Bob and I'm complete. Can I say something? Go for it. Cool. Yeah, um, I really love what you're doing, um, Jose and Keone. I think you're on totally on the right track here. Um, and, um, I guess I've had a similar vision and, um, I see it as this universal learning path that I've posted here and other places before, where it starts with the small group, goes to specialization, then to strategy, then to positioning, which is like the translation of core and then marketing, um, and then sales, and then project management. Um, and I've been involved with the future and, and other things online <clears throat> since 2016. And I've collected all this content and I've arranged it according to that um, seven steps that I just mentioned. And it's all stuff that Jose has created and Christo and Michael Janda and Melinda and Aaron Fletcher, you name it. Um, and they all need to get paid um, for this. And so I feel like the next step is to build a prototype that arranges all this content that you and everyone else has created. And it's a portal and people can see where they're at on their path of development through this seven steps. And, um, and then through the blockchain, you get paid royalties for your content every time somebody um, accesses it. Um, I don't know if that's the right business model that will support this. Um, I know that this subscription model with the small groups is been very lucrative for Chris and, and po possibly in the future and maybe now for you guys. Um, so I don't know if this undermines that or not i don't want it to undermine what anyone's doing but i feel like that this vision that you're talking about and that i'm thinking about will happen within the next five years and we and chris doe and his pro group community are uniquely positioned as experts communicators designers to make it happen and so I see this as a really important time. It's a beautiful vision. <clears throat> Thank you, Michael, for sharing. I have one more little thing to say. And just over this hill here is Saddleback Church. And I'm not into their dogma, but I've been made friends with people over there for uh, a couple of years now and have even met the founder, Rick Warren. And it's the capital of the world for small groups. It's the, it's the size of a university campus, this main campus. And I've experienced firsthand, you know, in person, how the, the power of these small groups that you're talking about and all the nuances of what makes one, for me anyway, more powerful than the other. And so um, there's some things to share there too, but it's more experiential than it is um, just... Um, talking about it online or writing about. It. So that's it. That's what I have to, I'm done speaking. 
Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, thank you for that, Michael. Um, lots of insights in that. Uh, Iwana, what's up? Hi, everyone. I was thinking about what happens before you go into blockchain and uh, NFTs, meaning that it feels like still the influential and powerful organization or, or people stand to gain the most from this. Like, for example, auction houses going into blockchain or famous people. And it still feels like many of us are small and you you it's like the the dilemma you to win big you gotta invest big right and other than that you can only rely on luck or chance or you know the a very long game <laughs> and the other thing is about the weak problem about you know how blockchain and nft drain resources and produce some damage to the environment so yes you can do solar system but then how do you properly recycle solar <laughs> panels and keep birds from dying or you know wind turbines and so on and so i'm saying it's a problem that has many heads and uh, some of the solution might lead to the same outcome I think that that all problems, you know, um, uh, are collective problems. Meaning, how do we solve uh, some of the things together? And uh, if you look at outside, so I'll I'll talk about all of the things you brought up. Um, you wanna like one is you know is is there access for the little person in 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 the space, right? Um, most of the barriers are knowledge and information. Um, most of the um, mechanics currently are in the investment space, meaning people using it as asset um, kind of management or investment vehicles. Um, the vision that, that, that many have of being able to exchange value inside communities you're seeing it in um, communities on FWB, other DAP, or like FWB, uh, which we have uh, a screenshot and we talk about in our uh, NFT uh, podcast. Um, you're beginning to see creatives and people organize around it. And then the, there's artists who've been in this space for a while. We have an example, and there was a slide there, if you wanna bring it back up, Keone. Of, um, that we talk about in, in our uh, podcast, a girl in Argentina who started minting uh, NFTs out of her work and you know they sell for a couple hundred dollars, Panther Shida. Um, but that, you know, a couple hundred dollars in Argentina uh, per piece, you know, it creates a sustainable income for her. Um, and, and, and I think there's outside of the issue of power consumption and outside of the issue of, um, is this something primarily for the current elite? Uh, outside of those things, um, it's really about shifting the conversation away from centralized control, right? Uh, decentralization is really the, 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 the main kind of thing. Like once you have a community exchanging value outside of you know, a centralized bank or outside of governments, like most of the people on this call all, all, are all over the world. Some people are in the US, some people are in Latin America, some people are in Asia, some people are, um, uh, imagine not having to have intermediaries, right? It's, it's a tool for communities to be able to organize around it. On the issue of, of power and the environment, you know, the, the biggest cost of environmental um, degradation or of the harm to the environment currently is, is, is fossil fuels in our transportation system, right? Um, like at a scale that dwarfs like even what we would consider is the problem of power consumption by the blockchain, right? Um, so cars, trains, planes, um, all of the things that we use to fuel the global economy are really the cost of um, the majority of the harm. So if you look at it from a designing and redesigning um, business models, business types, 
into local economies with their own ability to exchange value uh, outside of you know governments and banks it's super powerful now that that's a threat i mean there's some legislation here in the us right now currently happening to try to keep the blockchain space unencumbered by government but um we're in the middle of a you know transition globally and across so many different um issues um and one of them ultimately and what i learned this week from our conversations with the community that really gave me a lot of um how would i say i mean it's inspiration it was um it was fuel it was um and i'm talking about a call we did yesterday where pape you know uh, was doing some reflecting and and some pop pop magic uh and then we Roxana recorded a podcast i mean the podcast around this idea of the secrets of the universe are in the conversation um ultimately community ultimately moving together ultimately we're creative people we have so much power in being able to redesign what what we have around us Pape showed and I would be funny if you showed it again but we're going to go into our um into our uh, retro in a minute uh Pape shared this morning uh, before the, during the pre pre call uh here uh some of the work that he's doing you know for his local community um such a powerful example each of us are doing work locally and also for people across you know boundaries or across you know outside of our own countries um and as we move into this space and as we collectively um work and take action at the end you know we're doing it because we want to live in a very different frequency than in the frequency that we lived so i i don't use or i try not to polarize or use polarizing language you know capitalism is this or colonialism or you know i've recognized that we've kind of taken a little bit of that stance over the year that we've been broadcasting because it's something that we we feel but there doesn't have to be a polemic or a polarity really focusing and prioritizing building our own lives building our own selves um and becoming powerful creators is really the the ultimate rebellion um there has to be there there doesn't have to be this you know concerted effort and this anger at like the structures that are that are currently kind of containing us um the only thing that we can do is really build new ones and that's one of the reasons why i feel the system for me has been such a passionate thing and 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 in the moments that i question what the hell are we doing um pape brings it back or you know the community brings it back our synergy reflects something bringing sacred economics into this conversation that book is super critical and one thing that i that i really caught myself is in two things one in hypocrisy you know like not hypocrisy but like and not being authentic about the reasoning why you know i'm motivated to do the work that we do to do the community work to 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 restart the system not to just you know go and run away to puerto rico and like just chill out and and, and work on core or work on whatever you know the traditional kind of guru model which is to you know make make something that you don't have to work you know hard every day at but that you can continue selling um that that's an option and it, and it, to me coming back into this and 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 bringing um creating the space for the community has its roots in some of the ideas of of um and the, my my you can't see my my screen but i'm 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 going to actually finish reading reinventing organizations um it's about the human right it's about bringing human being back to work and back to how we sustain ourselves financially um and that's what excites me and 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 that's what kind of pushes me continuously so i have to remember that and and not forget and still be grounded in the material world still be grounded in the fact that we have to work and provide value and exchange value in the existing system um so that we can pay for the bills and the rent and like all those kind of things so thank you Juana for sharing that on complete 
Thank you for answering. I'm not trying to be polarizing. I'm just trying to look at it from different point of views and from extract from my information and new information that is coming in. And with oh, I get that. I get that. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm, my, I hope my response wasn't about saying we shouldn't polarize. It's it's what it is. It's simply I personally feel that the the best energy and the best way of creating um, is not in opposition, but in like where you have a infinite kind of field. You're not necessarily like going up against a system. Yeah. But it's, it's weird, even with polarizing, let's take, I know it's going to sound crazy, but let's take Dirty Dancing, okay? So oh. Patrick Swayze didn't like it, so there was an animosity between him and the lead actress. And they were actually annoyed by each other, but the way it was framed and they used it as professional act actors came across as passion. <laughs> That's often very common that so, if you, t you, so you take down, some, yeah. Yeah, sometimes the opposition and polarization might produce a surprising beneficial results. Outcomes. Yeah, yeah, of course. The, the, po the polarity between introverted and extrovert, between masculine and feminine, between, you know, yeah, it always, it always happens. Crimes of passion, yeah. People do get moved by passion. That I, I am not saying that we should not be passionate about, you know, climate change and about what's happening or about injustice. That's actually not what I'm saying. I'm saying, how do we create solutions? I'm very passionate about, you know, the injustices that are being done to the world and to the and to the planet. You know, it, it does upset me. It does make me angry. Uh, and then the question becomes, how do I act? And, and and then also, how do we leverage, you know, the, the differences between ourselves and the community and in our and how do we say, OK, that's your point of view or your uh, passion? Like, how do we actually co-create within it? That's a that's the big challenge. I think for me, one of the models always is, is seeing the behavior that happens on the play at Burning Man, where there's all these conflicts sometimes between very strong personalities. And at the end, you know, you have you you. You have the conflict and then you you pivot and you embrace you know with love and acceptance or you don't or you kind of move on um but that that passion usually leads to great results yeah i agree with you that's a very good dirty dancing was the best example yeah anyway moving um, on yeah uh, mila would you like to share and then arsenic oh. will end with you yeah, so um, like I said, I haven't been here in a while. So have, have you guys talked about how you can educate yourself around um, cryptocurrency on Clubhouse? Yeah, we actually, two weeks ago, we had a Clubhouse on NFTs. Or was yeah, because that's ago? helped me a lot. And I've seen, I, I, I've noticed on the updates, it's open to Android users now. So even more people can like go on there and um, realize that what's going on. But to speak to the fact like, oh, there's no space for the little person to invest. I mean, like in high school, I put $100 on Walgreens, okay? It doubled. So had I put more, but being 18, that's all I had, um, I would have made more, a lot more money. But um, it, it taught, the lesson that I learned from that $100 is like, oh, this is how this works. This is how the system works. This is how all of this works. So that was my investment in learning. And that's how it helped me be more comfortable with this new economy that's developing and and change is inevitable you know change is going to happen regardless of of what we do and where we are but it's nothing is cons nothing is forever and so um i don't know i just i just want to feel like don't 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 put yourself in this little hole like okay i'm just this one person what can i do but as everyone was saying before um you know this small group um i it, it's helped me tremendously. And so just keep going towards that kind of energy and keep on educating yourself and learning and being excited about um, whatever's gonna help you motivate you in your own special way. Um, and that's gonna help you um, be a better designer and a better human. And for me personally, it's music. So I just love music and that always helps me. Mm. Thanks. Thank you for that share, Mila. You know, uh, one of the things that you talked about and you know, we're 
where the accelerator program fits into this, we're, we're still trying to sort that out and position it. Um, but I do feel like you're absolutely right. Small circles that are really based around action um, and the doing of the work um, together cumulatively, I think is, is key. Um, and it being a safe space for you to, you know, be able to make the mistakes without judgment for you to feel free and open to have the wild and imaginative ideas and to have folks in that yes and uh, mindset. Super, super important. And thank you for your comments. Um, Arsenage and then Jersey, I saw you got your hand raised too. So we'll do Arsenage and then you, Jersey. Yeah, I, I was thinking, Joanna always asks these questions that are good and that like made me think about this space. And I, I, I'm, I was thinking in last month about that and about that and also about like thinking like and figuring out that for me the 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 biggest problem in blockchain space currently is what jose said definitely and that's why i feel the the need to like embrace what i know and share with others but also like that concept of inter interoperability or like bridging and I think like that is something that I'm really trying to, every time I sleep, I'm trying to keep that in mind that the goal is not for one network, one community to become the dominant, but to have million different communities and to provide bridges between those communities. So like to have million different blockchains that are going to be able to speak with each other. And that is technological as well as human problem. But I think for me, the only vision of blockchain is that vision of like, not it's not either or, it's not like <laughs> black is going to win, white is going to win, but it's really ability to like have million different communities that are all connected into one. And that that is like something that, that is hard thing to keep in mind, especially with the, with the current system but yeah i think that's to me that is the, the the most important thing in the in the blockchain interoperability and building bridges in in order to to connect and everybody has their own way to 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 build their own and just be able then to connect with others so yeah i'm actually <laughs> hello everybody uh, my name is jersey i would like to keep going about the conversation that iona had uh speaking about whether the little man has power and things like that. And I would like to say that there's a lot of hope in cryptocurrencies, but there's a lot of cryptocurrencies and they all have different purposes. And I personally see Bitcoin as a asset class, similar to how people see it as gold. And I think it's very important that we do a lot of research behind these things, similar to how we should be doing research into the financial um, system. You know, there's a lot of shady stuff, even in crypto, even though it's very open. For example, the relationship between Bitcoin and Tether, I feel like maybe too advanced, but that seems a little sketchy to me. Um, and I think that there may be some better cryptocurrencies than Bitcoin for, you know, day-to-day -day transactions. I personally see Ether being as a very good cryptocurrency for smart contracts, but maybe there's others that are better for day-to-day -day uses. I know Doge sounds like a meme, but it's so fast. It's a possibility, you never know. Um, I do think there's a lot of hope for the little guy, but as it is today, I still think there's a lot of, a lot of hurdles to get through before, you know, the little man can really get a lot of power back. Thank you. Thank you for your thoughts, brother. Yeah, you know, the little man is always fighting against Goliath, but uh, that's the power of collective action. But a lot of little people together, he started, you can start a fire. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So um, let's, uh, let's- A lot of it. people bum rush Lollapalooza and they get in, okay? Cause they can't catch all of them. And they built that thing like a fortress. Like you can't even sneak in anymore, okay? All the kids who can't afford money to go in there, they have a party on the outside or they bum rush the thing, but they weren't even there this year. But I'm just saying, you know, don't ever put yourself like, I can't cause I don't have enough money. Like you find a way, you'll get there. Just 
get there. Just get there. Get your butt over there. Bring whatever money you got and go. Do it. Bum, bum rush Lollapalooza. So they, did, they jumped over the porta potties one year to get in. They all did it. Like, can you imagine being in there like, oh, crap, this thing's falling down. How embarrassing. And they did it. And they arrested some kids. But they didn't arrest all of them. And they got in. <laughs> Mila, you reminded me. One of my friends went to Japan. And you know, it's um, the cu culturally you abide by the laws and the rules, and they were trying to get into this um, anime convention, and there was you know the uh, red cord thingies, and the you know the guys that are my co-national just raised the thing and just went through and the japanese didn't intervene that they were so polite but they were like baka gaijin they never <laughs> they yeah, never understand I, I how things VIP. work there was, there was a stage with red ropes and i told this girl like how do you get in there and she's like we just walked in so i went under the rope and i'm like all right i'm in here heck yeah like nobody's stopping me i had fun <laughs> That's how you get into the crypto space. You just like jump in and like go under the rope. <laughs> we would like to say something about the crypto space, about uh, a lot of small people combining, you know, to groups to get power. That is, that is, that's really good, but that does kind of bring in a, a small problem. There's a thing called pooling. And for example, there's what, what's called the ant pool. And so that pool is the biggest uh, amount of people together. And if they can get more people to join the ant pool, they can get over 50% of the computer power of Bitcoin and that can cause a problem because they can disrupt the blockchain. This is what we call the 51% attack. And I think it's really good, but it oh, does yeah. come with some problems, a few problems. That's it. Well, and, th those are also, very technical things. Yeah. Yes. Which, there's which, a, which, and there's a lot of, I know what Jersey is saying, because my husband keeps swapping things on his micro crypto thing. And there's also like a lot of boots that, you know, buy and sell on very tiny differences and they disrupt coins, regardless of how good the message or the system or what they're connected to. So it's, a, it's very weird. Yeah, there, there's Just, a lot of weirdness, but let's, let's yeah. not, we, we can't focus the whole conversation today on Life micro, I'm, I'm bots. Well, bots <laughs> trading is a, it happens in the regular stock market too. And, that's a whole different conversation, but I wanted us to do a retro and here's the purpose of the retro. Um, what we want to get from you um, and here I'll share my screen. Um, we want, this is an opportunity for all of us to use our collective voting power and uh, kind of have an, uh, uh, some time to um, give us feedback. So we don't we don't do this often enough, but we want to do it here. I'll put the link in the uh, in the chat, um, and we're gonna start real quick with the left side. So um, let me see if I can get us into the chat. If I can get into the chat, here we go. Uh, and that was a very harsh transition from going into microbots to bots uh, trading coins to doing the retro. So. On the left, and thank you to Mary for setting this up for us. Uh, there's check marks here on the left. There's only three exercises that we're doing. The first one is using a check mark, rate the following work streams. Five very satisfied, one not so satisfied. So like our broadcast that we're on right now, um, we've been doing a lot of them. You know, there's a lot of really great feedback, like from Papa, for example, that we need to start cutting the content and doing clips um versus the hour and a half that these conversations are uh etc so jump in the link is in the we have um a good number of people here so it's a good um it's a good uh, uh it's a good uh signifier of um what we're doing the accelerator program if you're part of it same thing you know so like if it's in the middle, that's a three. If it's on the right, it's a five, one, or two. Uh, you can duplicate, copy, and paste uh, the little check marks. This is, this is called co-creation right here. The agile planning sessions, those of you who joined those, uh, or if you had circles uh, last summer, or um, when we did circles, I think it was in the, in the, in the spring of 2021, um, where you got to the, the social media, We've been doing calls. Mary just added these categories based on the work streams of the teams 
that we're working on and maybe not all of you are part of it, but uh, the social media calls are really fun. Um, and uh, yeah, just general kind of, and then the second one, once you're done with that, you can move over and start grabbing and give us feedback. So what's worked well over this last year, over this you know, sequence that we've been doing our, all, our, all our broadcasts that we've been, you've, you've been witnessing us create the system together and here we are and as partners, you know, as the founders, Mary and, and Keone and myself, we're working to figure out, okay, what are, what's our focus? How do we uh, manage the community and grow the business or what do we create? And um, the DAO and the uh, human experience DAO has been something that has really stuck from all of the conversations that we've been having. Uh, and and there've been many and, and many have been very interesting and challenging. What really works well for you? What, what has been successful? What, what do you love about what we're doing? What are some questions that you have? What are new ideas that you think we should try? You know, what needs to change? You know, one thing we notice is that it takes up a lot of energy to do, you know, a broadcast uh, design therapy every week and core office hours every week. Um, and we didn't have enough time to focus energy on some of the projects like creating the courses or like doing business development or planning. So we felt that we needed to make those only once a month. Uh, we've been talking about how to make the accelerator, um, you know, how to scale it, how to, how to price it, how to deliver it. So there's a lot of conversations that we're having. So yeah, jump in. Um, I'm gonna set a timer. Um, You know what? What idea? What needs to change? What are new ideas to try? I'm gonna zoom in here on this so that we can play by play. I'll put some music. Yeah, I just have an external. I'm gonna share again. I put um I put a at the living with someone. It's a little bit sleepy, but okay, I'll use that one. And if, as you complete one thing, like for example, copy a heart from up here. Um, I love this one right here, sharing process from different designers. I wish we would have shown what Pape was showing us. Um, that could just be a channel like where different designers just show the work they're working on. I love the modeling is something that, yeah. Mm, working on real projects. Yeah, Discord, that's a super huge one. Tipping each other with tokens. <laughs> There's a reason why we're beginning to ask everyone to get wallets. Discord actually allows for tokenization. We can say thank you to Pape for his energy tokens and 
Papa's like, more tokens. We can make our thumbnails, you know, of who we are, NFTs. I love tokens. I'm going to change the music because this is so sleepy. I'm going to fall asleep here. Yeah, I got it. I got the one you sent through. I just have it. I'm going to stop my, that's my forgiveness, living wisdom playlist. Much better. Can you hear that one now? You know, while we're doing this, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to everyone that shows up so continuously. Um, when Keone and I started talking about doing this as an experiment, specifically, you know, design therapy, which again is his idea, uh, to call it that, his idea, you know, our collective ideas in terms of how to format it. Um, but he had a vision of what he wanted to do and what you know design therapy was um as a name at least um and it's become something completely kind of different and some surprises and like what you know kind of has ensued especially with to the consistency of doing them every week so that or that consistency and the, not the surprise but the fact that we gather and we love it um says a lot and there's a lot there outside of complete completely outside of any ideas of business model outside of any ideas of value exchange outside of any ideas of business just connection being the currency is so powerful and as we move the conversation towards the future and towards you know abundance and towards you know this idea of having it be a token-based community that's ultimately what, you know, a stock is, you know, everyone has ownership of the thing itself that they love, right? Like you love Walgreens, Mila, and they have all the things and lip gloss and ear thingies and, you know, day quill when you're sick and, you know, ice cream. I think what they have ice cream too. Um, the community is so extremely valuable, uh, especially once we have Ooh, a gathering, a physical gathering. What about circles again? Circles is coming out. Agile training, yeah, flow. Oh yeah. Also, Imagine. someone yeah. asked if there's a place for to share templates, and I think that's inside the accelerator. Uh, yes, the accelerator uh, has that. And and for those who are in the accelerator, I, I shared uh, the process of a brief and stylescape, and I will soon when the logo and illustrations are approved. I will add also the, the final results, final yeah. conclusion. I love that idea of a retreat. Yeah. Spreadsheets with all the information shared. Oh man. When are we going to organize a retreat? Ah, oh, and answer questions. So thank you guys for participating and for doing this. Badges and recognition, schedules and notifications. Discord. So the last part, um, and we'll do five minutes, um, is bringing some of these ideas over and prioritizing around feasibility and importance 
um, and then putting them on a schedule. I think I, I'm going to borrow some of these ideas from here. So having a clear schedule, uh, I'm going to put it out. Here. I'm just going to drop them and then you guys, um, you guys can drop, you can put them in how important they are. Um, so I'm moving, I'm copying things to the right. So like, for example, working on real projects together is really getting a lot of love. Go back and vote, copy hearts where you want energy because that's what we're gonna move into. So for example, uh, Agile Training has two votes. So I, it has the only votes inside of answer questions. So I'm gonna bring it over here and then you guys move it and how important it is and then how feasible it is. Scheduling, improving scheduling notification creating connection and production of love, having themes in the broadcast, those things work, sharing the process with different designers. You know, that one is, 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 um, it's interesting and important. And I think it's something that we are doing with our social media, like where people's philosophy and people's process is being, um, highlighted, um, simple videos and demos is a big four. Oops, copy, copy, not, 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 yeah, so that it stays in both places. Yeah, so that's high. Sharing process from different designers, importance, feasibility. Uh, feasibility is high. All the way up at the top right is things that are really easy. I'm going to put the importance of agile training up here because that's the flow kit. Um, crypto wallet training is coming up with two votes. Uh, a gathering. Oh my God, that is actually happening. They're coming up. I'm putting, I'm going to throw it up on the feasibility. Uh, so I would say super high importance. I mean, feasibility, like there's travel, there's, we can do a virtual and real world gathering, but the point I think of a gathering is physical. Am I correct? Uh, I don't think, yeah, there we go. Somebody just dropped a beach next to me. Oh, man. Working on real projects. I think importance is high. Uh, feasibility is not low. It's not that hard to do. Meaning we've done it in circles. Uh, people are doing it. Okay. Crypto uh, wallet training. Let's drop that in here. Uh, here's one thing. Uh, retreat in Panama. That's uh, I'm, I'm going to guess, you know, how that's where that's coming from. Um, What's one thing for you, you know, it's interesting. For me, it's all abstract still. Um, I think the most love is on real projects. That to me is the highlight of, of this whole thing right now, aside from improving notifications. So remember that uh, the broadcasts are going to be the first week of every month. So the first week of September, when we're all coming back from August. August, we're really going to take time to rejig and to rest and to... We'll still have our social media calls because I think, honestly, they're they're like a proxy for these calls. If you want to join, get, join the Discord channel and you'll know what's happening. Let's make Discord a big place to hang out, you know, during August and to plan this DAO. I, um, I surrender and submit the planning and, or what we wanna create is up to us, up to us taking, you know, Keone took on the accelerator and, you know, it's his project and we're advising and giving him input on how to do it and what we need to adjust. But what projects do you wanna create inside this community? What do you wanna lead? We're going decentralized. We're going fully decentralized. This is not gonna be about like what Jose is doing or what Jose wants or what, what does Mila want? What does Shaquille want? You know, what, what do we each of us need to learn? What do we wanna create? Um, and as we begin to introduce the idea of a token for the system, then we can actually begin to look at, you know, empowering each other and ourselves, both in the sense of possibility, but also in the sense of, you know, currency like it becomes tangible right when you can tip pape for you know an illustration you know with the system token 
um, or where we can vote for different things that we want to do inside the community, which is what we're doing right now. So this is a model, this simple facilitation is a model of like, what is it that we want to do? And it's coming out. So anything else that is coming out um, that's big, like this is, let's, we're going to wrap up in two minutes. Um, anything that, you know, so I think that the first thing is going to be um, since real life projects became I think that's kind of like the first thing to look at to schedule um, and agile training kind of came out. And the gathering, let's just schedule it for 2022. We're actually, I'm talking actively with my crypto uh, godfather, I think is what Keone called him, um, about doing an event in 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 the new year uh in 2022 at some point uh and maybe we can just put it all together and it becomes a system of that maybe some people can create their own calls yes so much is in such a big disconnect between the main calls if you want to do that just let us know and we'll set it up and give you you know it's all part of the community who's not on the discord channel here in the chat Mauricio, can we make sure that everybody here gets on the Discord channel? Yeah, I just, I've been posting the server link. Yeah, keep on posting. Uh, if it doesn't it. work, it, it's straight there still on the link. If it doesn't work, I added my ID. You add me personally, and then I add you manually to the, to the server because some people have had trouble joining with the link or the yeah. links, no matter how many links we send them, so. Got it. So can we get everybody's commitment to join us on Discord? That is the foundation to beginning the process of going into becoming a DAO, which is like, what does that mean? There is a channel in Discord where we're actually posting, um, where we're posting information and we'll continue to do so. The NFT episode is gonna come out in about a week or, or a week and a half. Um, maybe we can do some sort of call in between now and September so that People don't feel like, oh my God, there's no calls. Are we marrying the system uh, by joining Discord? Uh, no, no, no ring, no ring. This is an open community. Yeah. A network based on mutual referrals and recommendations. That's a super interesting one. Mini tutorials about app software, not boring, not boring. I like where people are going. Simple video demos like Google Calendar. Ah, oh, that one's huge. Okay, I'm gonna bring this one up. Co sharing costs and Zoom in a row. Yes, there is a place. So let's bring. Um, Google Calendar really up in the high visibility. Work on that right away. Uh, financial competency circle. That's an interesting one. Sales is our topic next week. Um, Discord is where the crypto community is coming together. Bjorn. Um, it did start as a video game thing. Yeah. But all the communities, like if I show you my Discord, all of the the communities that I've, the different tokens have channels and you'll see it on their websites. All right, let's wrap this up, Keone. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing. This is amazing. Um, Google Calendar, financial, co-creating new projects, a gathering, simple videos, this whole thing right here. Let's see, they're all simple videos, agile training, co-creating real projects. I think that's really a big one. I'm gonna make it really big. So I just wanna end and wrap and really uh, express gratitude um, to everybody who participated. Um, 
I want to express gratitude to Keone for his mastery, for his growth, for the work that it has taken to get here. Um, a lot of love for Pape and for the energy and the, the light and the direction and momentum. I see that Patricia joined and um, I wanna say thank you to Patricia also, to Roxana, to Mauricio, Audrey, just everyone who brings so much light and so much energy and Shaquille. For me, this is, you know, the fuel, it's, it's the fuel. Your love and your energy and everything that is getting done, um, the ideas, what we're accomplishing together. And even without accomplishing anything, just the connection and the vibes is amazing. So Keone, I'll hand it off to you to get us through the upload and to take us home. Thank you, everyone. Sergio, yes, Sergio. Don't forget about Sergio. Every single one of you. Porsche. Yeah, you know, um, we're so grateful for you guys. Uh, you know, you guys have, you guys are the um, the fuel, as Jose says. You know, you guys keep us going and give us direction. And, you know, we're just grateful for the openness that you guys have had for us to allow for us to come into your lives and be a, for us to be able to share you know, our experiences and our talents and our flaws and the challenges that we go through and the opportunity for us to just grow together. Um, you know, it's, this community has been a revelation to me in so many different ways. Um, it's, it's highlighted, you know, the, the challenges that I have in my own life and the way that I need to grow and, you know, to be able to embrace with a more open heart and to, go through all of the things that are really like the foundations of what it means to be human. You know, this has been an incredible journey for me and I'm grateful for Jose for, you know, being, you know, the, uh, the Obi-Wan Kenobi in my life. Um, you know, and for you guys, you know, you guys are like my fellow Jedi masters, my fellow Padawans, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible. And just to see how you guys wield like your knowledge and your imagination in so many unique and powerful ways. It's it's crazy, you know, it's it's like a constellation of just talent and brilliance that I'm just like constantly in awe with. But um thank you guys and um let's move on. Let's 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 wrap this up. So you know we we are starting a book club um and Jose got me this incredible book. Um, Pape has been sharing a little bit about it, um, but a new world, a new earth awakening to your life's purpose. Um, I'm about a chapter, a chapter and a half in, and and I stopped sharing, Keone, so you can share the music again on your end. Yeah. Uh, um, are you guys hearing the music? Is oh it yeah, right I'm now? hearing it. Cool. Sweet. Beautiful. Pape, um, give a quick uh, sales pitch for the book. Yeah. <laughs> it it will. Uh, the only thing I can describe is it, it it's, talks about stuff that it's hard to rationalize sometimes, but you get this sense, this feeling that you're understanding. And it also, I, it challenged me. Actually, when I started reading it for a week, I was tired and it was just to understand what was being said. And I keep going back. It is a really accurate way to view consciousness and the experience of living in consciousness because at the end it's it's all there. Uh, I haven't finished the book, but it has definitely helped me just detach from so much stuff that I was attached that was useless and understanding the, the ego from a healthy standpoint and 
knowing that I cannot detach completely from ego, but that my ego, it's it's holding into the good stuff like love and family and learning and community and and growth and learning, you know, and it's been magical. It's brought me peace. That's the only thing way I can describe it. I, I actually I'm crying every day just by realizing how beautiful it is to be alive. And I feel like this book gave me that perspective and I will read it for like three times more because it's a lot, but I highly recommend it. Yeah. Unmute yourself. Uh, thank you, thank you, Pape, for that um, that beautiful uh, breakdown. And uh, I'm going to be starting to read this. You know, I'd love for you guys to join me on that journey. Um, we'll probably set up like a Discord channel where we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, we'll probably put like some of my takeaways into uh, the accelerator program. Um, but yeah, really excited to just to dive in um, and hopefully you'll join us. So uh, we always end with an upload. So what I would love from the audience is, you know, after today's conversation and we went all over the map today, um, but based on the conversation, what was what was one valuable thing that you got from today's broadcast? And uh Maybe Jose, would you like to model? Yeah, I'm Jose. Um, watching the retro and seeing what came to the top. Um, at the beginning of the broadcast, I wrote in my notebook, let go, <laughs> let go. Um, my anxiety and stress about what to do and <laughs> direction and leadership and all those things the answer is let go <laughs> that's the answer let go just let go let go there's a uh, song that goes, i'm sorry go ahead yeah there's a song that goes um you try really hard to take control just relax and let go let go i don't know just I love music. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so that my takeaway is that let go and let love. Um, the hard things that or the challenges that we've had, you know, I had a note on my on the island on the loft here in, in our headquarters. And it said, you know, the problems created with the mind can't be fixed with the mind. They can only be fixed with the heart. And it's like, boom, that's my, my upload. Let go. Floor is open, y'all. Would anybody else like to um, upload? I would. I would like to say, similar to how his, uh, Jose has been saying that he's very grateful. I'm grateful as well to have found the community of such like-minded people, very creative people. I've tried for a long time to find something similar to this where people can be mature, and help each other out and i feel like this is it for me that was it thank you very much i'm complete thank you for that brother so there's this dichotomy of like like-minded people versus um different people from different cultures and i find myself like trying to figure out which is better because everybody says like, oh, you got to find like-minded people to have this community. But then I feel like that ends up turning into some kind of like cult, you know, like, or it's not healthy because you're getting all, it's like an echo chamber essentially. Um, so I feel like diversity is also key. So I like this place because it's like diverse with thinking, but also like-minded at the core i guess and then also my takeaway is um <clears throat> like our consciousness 
thinking about other people's consciousness and i can't even say that word and i can't spell it <laughs> but um it's like the most meta shit ever and i feel like that has something to do with like the core of being a human being <clears throat> and the universe and all that shit so yeah super meta super mind-boggling because we're like the only creatures that can do that is think about other people thinking about other people and so on and so forth so yeah that's my takeaway yeah thank you for that brother glad to have you here I, I just wanted to, Geraldine shared something in Spanish that I think is super interesting. Uh, I will try to translate it, translate it as best as I can. And I, she says that every innovation in human evolution has a. Oh no! <laughs> we, we, can, we can read it in Spanish, but she she said. Um, if you look lower in the chat, maybe, I actually translated it. Yeah. yeah. So this meeting made me analyze that all innovation in human evolution has a transit, uh, has an, a, a transition, and it's important to look at these changes um, before they happen, um, porque de allí llegan ideas grandes. Because from those places, new ideas, big ideas emerge. So yeah. So so the evolution that we're going through, Jardine, and consciousness as people. Uh, not being afraid to bring that into the workspace, not bringing afraid to bring that into the community, not being afraid to bring that into our relationships and uh, allowing for each other to uh, show up as full humans, as Pape, as, you know, Patricia, as, you know, Adriana, as Mauricio, as Sergio, like every single one of us showing up fully is what makes us powerful. And for me, the... <clears throat> The idea of like, can we do this and work together? Can we do this and create? Can we do this and make, you know, uh, and create abundance, you know, financially and materially? Um, that's always the question, right? Because separation and extraction and, you know, working alone sometimes is the one way that you can actually create something potentially that's beneficial for you. Everyone in their corner to figure out the, their own stuff so that we can survive is not necessarily a model that we can really move forward into it. And I don't think we're all here. We're all here because of the community and the vibe. And then all the results kind of come from kind of the, the way of being versus from what we do, which is super interesting and another conversation. But to quote <clears throat> Bjorn, uh, the most metaphysical shit <clears throat> ever. Welcome to the system. Uh, I, I want to say something. It's, there's this feeling I, I'm getting um because i i've heard two comments uh that i i'm trying to understand really where they come from and i know maybe the perception might be that some of us are closer either to jose or kioni or mary or the system you know i just wanted to address that in a way that the 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 way that happened and i do feel close is because I, when i knocked on the door and i op it was always open and i just managed to came closer by by putting myself closer you know and i just wanted to let everyone know that that door i i believe it's open for everyone so the reason it might seem like that is because in my case i opened that door and it was open so i, I encourage you if you want that to happen uh there's two ways to that door and i encourage you to open it and come closer that's all i wanted to say Thank you for that, Pape. Uh, but we're still doing uploads, y'all. Would love to take a couple more before we move on. So what I learned today was Discord. I mean, I've been gone for a while, so like I'm like, oh wow, this is cool. So that's good. Thanks. <laughs> yes, y'all. Hop on the Discord. It goes down in the Discords. All right, y'all, we're going to move on. Um, 
and uh, let's let's wrap up. So uh, let's get the share going on. Um, so we're going to end on this note. You know, we just want to remind you guys that we still have the accelerator program going on um, for you know small group personal development live work on projects. Um, this is the space that you can have it. Papa shared a little bit earlier where you can actually see our work in progress and projects that we've worked on. So uh, any kind of collateral that you might be looking for in your own workspace, like what does creative briefs look like? Well, we have creative briefs from EO that we just did that is in the, in the accelerator program. Um, what do statements of work look like? Um, we are doing, we're working, Iwana is helping us out and she's helping uh, put together something of a little bit style guide for the accelerator program and some of the decks and exercises that we're using. So we're sharing that live um, and you guys can see what that process looks like. Um, you know, so if you are interested in, you know, building a little bit of clarity and kind of prepping yourself to, to do the heavy work on yourself uh, and your brand, uh, both professionally and personally, uh, the accelerator is a place where we, um, we create a safe space for that, that growth to happen. Um, so just a reminder of some of the things that you'll be able to find in there, you'll be able to find broadcasts I post replays, things like a replay from uh, from Clubhouse. You can find those in broadcasts. Um, circles is the way that we kind of go through and do live projects together and live development. So we've done Fire and Core so far, Flow, which is Agile training. Uh, you'll be able to find a kit for that in the Accelerator program. And also things like um, uh, you know, especially based on the feedback that you guys gave today, maybe putting together a circle around, like, let's all create our own wallets together and let's all set up our uh, our blockchain um, collateral and, and assets together. Uh, let's figure out how to make our first crypto purchase. You know, like some of those things are, are really exciting. And I think it would be awesome if we could kind of put that together into a circles. Um, and then also, of course, is play. So... Um, book club, which we just kicked off with the new earth, um, that's going to be going down. Uh, maybe if we can get Jose to leverage some of his yoga training and put it on us, <laughs> <later> on us. <laughs> let's do it. I definitely need to do it. Well, actually, I like the idea of doing a, for the accelerator, uh, doing a call, uh, in two weeks or in like a, in the middle of the month to go over the book and to have a discussion circle around the book. Um, yeah, that would be really great. Jardine is, yes, she's in for yoga. Then the, that would be the middle of the day because you're on the East Coast. So yeah, we can do three o'clock here in LA. Um, yeah, knock the door. Yeah. So um, yeah, but we'll just end it. You know, the accelerator program, we do have a group that's going to be kicking off next week. Um, so if you'd like to join us, uh, send me a DM, hit me an email. Uh, I'm available, uh, you know, I'm accessible in all of the places. So just, just reach out, the door is open. Yeah, and that's the, that's where you can sign up. You know, this is a little bit of what inside looks like. So um, we're ending and, you know, we just want to remind you guys, we also are on Facebook. So check us out, Core Brand Strategy Foundation, it's available. Uh, we invite everyone. There's no limitation to the group. And connect with us in all the other places that we're social, particularly Instagram. So you can find us at We Are The System, no E. Uh, you can find myself at Keone Chong. Uh, we've got the lovely Mary Gribben at Mary A. Gribben with a B. And then, of course, we've got Jose Caballer. Uh, and we also use the hashtags Core is Magic and We Are The System. So. Uh, if you're catching this on YouTube, like and subscribe and comment. Uh, we're always checking out your, your feedback and we're a very inclusive community. We'd love to hear any kind of feedback that you have for us. And here we are, y'all. Music and no cookies. So, if anybody has any last thoughts, random things they'd like to share, Jim usually has some sort of unique thing that he got today, a pen. We've got uh, 
We have the award that you recently sourced. What you got going on for us today, James? Oh, James, you're muted. I think I could make a spinner out of these some of these shapes I got in the I would pile. Mm -hmm. But uh, in a, a bar plant, so I got perforated square steel and some other fittings. So I'll make a wood sliding head thing with a bar plant for woodworking. <laughs> so nice. that's an experimental clamp system I'll design. <laughs> well, well, next time we meet, you'll have to show us the developments on that. Yeah. All righty, y'all. We're going to end this. Much love to you all. We're so Great weekend. For you. See you on Discord. Yeah. Peace, y'all. Bye. There you go. That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> I know. <laughs>